H-A-P-P-I-S-B-U-R-G-H. Obviously pronounced Haysborough. And what a wonderful morning it is. A lot calmer than when I was here last time. We have some wonderful sea defences and in the bright bit beyond there is a mass of groins of all shapes and sizes, all angles and it's really a case of finding the ones that want to shoot and as I've never been here before it's a little bit of a guessing game and that erosion is horrendous isn't it all along this coastline Hence the huge rocks um, in front of the cliffs to try and prevent his falling into the sea. Mother Nature is a vicious so-and-so. Now there are more, as I say, more um, wooden bits sticking out of the ground or out of the sea. You shake a stick out. So it's a case of finding, so, ooh, case of finding some that I like. The skies are blue, a bit of colour. A smidgen of colour in the sky. Right, I'm off. I'm going to get some photos done. See you in a minute. We had a hint of colour in that direction, up there, oh sorry we were a little bit on the wonk there. We've got a bit more colour over there but the thing that's fascinating me here is this set of groins. We've got a set of three, one and then another taller one. I popped the six stop on and I quite like that. But now I've popped the 10 stop on to really smooth that water out. Unlike last time that I was here, we've actually got some rather nice colour in the sea. Last time it was yucky and brown and bleh because we'd had three storms or two storms on the trot. Now I did say last time that, oh excuse me a second, I just realised I've done that wrong. Manual that I don't use the apps because, for setting the timers because I just don't get on with them. Excuse me. Right, let's have a go. They always give me the most bizarre times. So I tend to stick with judging. Experience is teaching me roughly how long I need to expose an image for. It's a nice soft colour up there. There's two two bits of wood in the water out there look. and that would make a really minimal image anyway I keep getting distracted yes I'm shooting on timer I have the 10 stop 0.6 reverse grad in because the sky is still brighter than the water we've got some nice soft light there's no wind it's marvelous there's no breeze the, the sea is quite active shall we say we are on an outgoing tide and the reason I'm here, it's very rare I'm anywhere on an outgoing tide, as you know. Let me just turn that off a second. That's it. Is so that I could get down closer to the water's edge. When I came down before just to get the lay of the land, it was high tide and you couldn't walk along here. You, you could have, but you'd have got very wet and very possibly swept out to sea. And I really didn't fancy that. Let's have a look at this. Yes, that's lovely, that is. Nice and minimal, 76.2 seconds, Six stop, uh, sorry, 10 stop, 0.6 reverse grad. Probably end up as a square crop, I think, I believe. Yeah, or maybe, no, it'll work as a 10 by 12, there's just a band of colour in the sky and then lots of soft blue water. There's still a bit of texture in the water, it hasn't got rid of it altogether. Let me try and turn you round. Whee! Every now and then we get a really big wave. <laughs> Let me try and turn you around just a sec. So that's the scene as I'm viewing it. And what I'm concentrating on is these. 
lots of negative space above, lots of negative space below. And the finished image, if this will focus, yeah, is that. Obviously, it's a bit brighter on the screen than you're seeing there. But I think that works quite well. It is so nice to be back doing minimal stuff at the coast. There's some fabulous rocks down here. And I'm thinking the six stop, you see how every now and then the waves really come in. Although it's very, very foamy, might not work, but I can give it a go. I've been really lucky at the coast and I've just got absolutely drenched. Hey-ho! Before I got drenched, I was shooting down here. And I know they say to look out whoops, for the seventh wave, but that was horrific. It literally came straight over my head. Woohoo! So, really strong sunlight, as you can see, the sun has now broken the horizon. These rocks here were making for some lovely foreground interest. I tried the 10 stop, which are quite light, but the 6 stop worked a lot better. It, it, it is very foamy, so you don't get a lot of streakiness, but I managed to pick up a little bit of movement around here as the water came in, and then I triggered it again and did a 5 second exposure as the water went out, and I think that worked quite nicely. Oh, that sun is bright, you're about to get blinded. Now the reason for coming here, I think I was saying something about low tide, yes, or receding tide, is to get the water going out so I can get to more of these groins. And there's hundreds of them, so I'm going to take a wander up and see what else we can shoot. Apparently, let me just flick it up, you might not, ooh, here. I believe that's the remains of Haysborough Pier. I may be wrong, but I believe it is. Whether it was a, a, a proper pier like you get at Cromer and so forth, or more of a little jetty, I don't know. But it's fascinating. And some of these sea defences date from, I think it was the Second World War. Amazing. But they were war defences, not sea defences. The rocks that are down here are now more to stop this corrosion. Because that is not, cor I keep saying corrosion, no, it's because I work with cars. Erosion. It's horrendous. Reminds you how brutal Mother Nature can be. Right, I'm going to take a poodle up there. Now that I've got sunrise and sunrise colour out of the way, although we're in for a blue sky day, because I'm shooting long exposures, I can probably shoot a little bit later into the morning than I normally would. of these groins stretching out as far as the eye can see down there. There's also a shed load down there. And this beach, oh, where have you gone? This beach is also on different levels and I presume that's a man-made thing because we've got some really hefty sea defences here. So I'm up on the higher level. I didn't want to go down on the lower level because, and I can't see you, so I've no idea what's going on. Um, the tide is still coming in really, really well. We've got a pretty blue sky and now that the sun is above the horizon, we've got that dark murky water, that lovely blue aqua colour has vanished and we're picking up the silt as the, the, the waves are churning in. So we've got quite a marked horizon line. Quite a bright sky, quite a dark sea. So in the hope of eradicating that as much as possible, I've popped the polarizer on and turned it to give the maximum effect on the sky, which normally you don't want because it looks horrible. It's making the little wispy white clouds almost pop out, but not quite, but it is evening the exposure slightly. I've picked on this first groin that I've come to a marker, 
and say, I'm looking into the sun, so bear with me. There's a marker at the post with the obligatory bloody seagull parked on the end. What is it about seagulls and marker posts? It's like a lookout. And I've got a few of these uprights leading out into it. I've got, I'm shooting at 17 mil, so I've got a mass of sea and I've got a mass of sky. And that is coming out, oh, where would you say? Let's have a look. Just under halfway up the image from the left hand side. And it's actually worked quite well at a shutter speed. Oh, where are we? 138 seconds. The horizon line is very, very faint, which is going to make it an awful lot easier to blend away in post if indeed I decide to do that. There is a slight difficulty in that the marker post itself is showing above the horizon line. I can't do anything about that. I'd need to be ooh, up there to get it below the horizon line. And the lower I go, the more I'm going to get above the horizon line and it's going to become even harder to blend that. But I quite like that. I'm on, what were we shooting at? We were shooting at F8, ISO 100, 138 seconds. And with the 10 stop in, I've changed the, the white balance to 10,000 Kelvins. And that's given me a lovely pastel blue, which I might leave little bit of white in the sky yeah I think that looks all right oh it is nice to be back doing minimal stuff at the coast well I'm wandering back to the car because although I said you could shoot later into the day when you're doing long exposures there is such a vast difference between the sky and the watercolour that I'm really struggling. And I was just looking, excuse me, for one more image. That's better, I think. And I think I found it, and it's going to be a square crop. I have put the, oh, I'm looking at you, which is straight into the sun. I have put the 10 stop on. Sorry, I'm just trying to find my ISO. That's it. So then I can turn turn that up just, just bear with me a second while I go and do a huddle with myself that's better right we're sorted okay I'm back with you so we're going for a square crop it's gonna be mono the tide is really slow going out here so this is definitely a low tide place which is great for me because I haven't really got any locations that I can go to for low tide and there is hours of endless fun to be had here so it's been a good recce apart from anything else i'll flip you around and show you what i'm shooting at just a second out here somewhere around there is a single solitary groin i don't know if it's one i think it's a metal post and i'm shooting on as you can see the 70 to 200 i've got the 10 stop on i've got the the 0.6 reverse grad pulled all the way down because it is so bright I'm still trying to reduce oh sorry extend the exposure time because I want a sea of white with just a solitary pole in the middle of it I'm having to shoot landscape uh, sorry portrait orientation and you're never going to see that in a month of oh, they might just be able to make it out it's so bright. I just that I want that really, really minimal, and I think that actually works quite nicely. I have left the polarizer on because I'm excluding the sky. The polarizer is also helping me to slow that exposure down. But I quite like that, I think. And that's it from Hisborough, spelt Happysburg. The English language is marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> so thank you for coming along. Hope you enjoyed this quick look round, quick little look round Hisborough. I'm going to head back to the car park before the attendant comes along and bangs a ticket on me because I'm sure my parking ticket expired about two hours ago because I'm having so much fun here. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next Sunday when we'll do it all again. Bye for now. <laughs>